today we are discussing constitutional and political history of Pakistan and uh, the first period of it and this is from 1947 till 1956. In August 1947 we got independence and in March 1956 Pakistan was able to implement its first constitution. That is why we are going to cover this period, this nine year and six month period and what happened during this period. This is the focus of our today's class. Before going to learn the constitutional development in this era, we must know some basic facts about this uh, the government that who ruled the country and who were the rulers as so we may know the names of the rulers and we may know the tenure of the rulers. This will help us in understanding our learning the, about the, the rulers. As we know that Pakistan got independence under Independence Act 1947 and this act also under section 8C this act makes the government of India Act 1935 as an interim constitution for both Pakistan and India. So the constitution of Pakistan from August 1947 till March 1956 this was the government of India Act 1935 and in, in bracket we have to write as adopted by Pakistan. So Pakistan adopted this constitution and this remained the constitution until and unless both of the dominions make their own. So we know that India implemented its first constitution on 26 January 1950 but Pakistan was not able to achieve this task. So who were our rulers? There were two types of rulers in, in this act. One was the head of the state and the other was head of the government. Head of the state, we will later discuss that what is the difference between head of the state and head of the government. But head of the state, the title of this was governor general, but we can say this was like uh, a president. So who were the presidents or who were the governor generals of Pakistan? Hayadam was the first governor general and Yaqat Ali Khan was the first Prime Minister. This constitution was parliamentary in nature and that is why Yaqat Ali Khan had to lead the government. But uh, in this constitution there were two aspects which made Qaid Azam as the most prominent personality. One that uh, the, the government of India Act 1935 gave too much power to the Governor General. And again the next point is that Qaid Azam being the founder and being the undisputed and being the respectable leader a leader of Pakistan enjoyed too much state and too much power. So uh, in the first year of Pakistan we see that Qaid Azam is dominating each and every aspect of the government and he is uh, leading the government and the prime minister and his cabinet also. We know that Qaid Azam passed away September 1948 and uh, after him the next governor general of Pakistan was Khaja Nadimidin. He was from Bengal. He was a politician and a landlord and a educated and soft-hearted man. After the death of Jinnah, we see that the government or the machine of Pakistan is overwhelmed by Prime Minister Diyakat Ali Khan. It shows that this is actually the personality which holds or which attracts the power. Jinnah was more powerful, so he as a governor general had more powers. But after Jinnah, when Diyakat Ali Khan was more powerful, so he as the prime minister had more powers. And this man as a governor general, he was a routine governor general or a routine head of the state. We know that Diyakat Ali Khan was assassinated at Rawalpindi uh, in October 1951. And his sudden created a vacuum in the government and this vacuum was filled by Fajr Nadim. He became the Prime Minister. He, de he decided to be the Prime Minister. Maybe that he was seeing that Yaqat Ali Khan being a Prime Minister had more powers. So he wanted to be a Prime Minister. Whatever the case is, he became the Prime Minister in October 1951. And he commended a man whose Malik Bunam Muhammad. He was a bureaucrat. He was a businessman and he, he remains finance minister of Pakistan and he was recommended to the crown to the crown and Great Britain that Ghulam Muhammad may be our governor general so he was appointed governor general and he remained in this position till August 1955 in August 1955 he was removed from his position due to his poor health in the meantime, Ghulam Muhammad, he utilized his, his powers given to him by Government of India Act 1935 and he removed 
this Fajr Nazimuddin from the government in April 1953. There were various reasons of his removal, but here we are concerned only to the constitutional development. I mean, he and his cabinet were not able to draft a constitution for the country. So he was removed from the government by utilizing the powers given to the Governor General by Government of India Act 1935. Another Prime Minister was rather important. He was Muhammad Ali Bogra, an ambassador at Washington. He was important to rule the country and to make a constitution for the country. So he remains our Prime Minister and he was about to present a draft of the constitution in 1954, but in October 1954, he was removed from the government, did by this Ulam Muhammad, not only from the government, but all of the constituent assembly was dissolved. This led to a litigation and the president of this uh, constituent assembly, Molvi Tamizuddin, filed a petition and he asked for the chief court at Sen and where he was given a unanimous decision. But this was challenged in federal court where Justice Munir and his fellows decided in the favor of Ghulam Muhammad. This time the whole cabinet was removed and another a constituent assembly was selected by the provincial ministers and this was the second constitutional assembly and in this assembly Muslim League though which was a single largest party but it was not had a, not a simple majority at all though its membership was more than the other parties but it lost its membership and in the meantime this man illness and due to poor health he was forced to resign by whom he was forced to, to resign by our next Governor General, Major General Sekandar Mirza Asbengali. So we have two Governor Generals from among the politicians and two Governor Generals from among the bureaucracy. And this is the beginning of the establishment to rule the country directly and indirectly. And this was due to the weakness and sense of the politician at that time that they could not resist the powerful people in, in Rawalpindi. This became the fourth Governor General and in the meantime he appointed Chaudhary Muhammad Ali, a Muslim Ligi, as a, as a Prime Minister and during his tenure, at tenure of Chaudhary Muhammad Ali, Pakistan was able to formulate and was able to adopt its first ever constitution on 23rd March 1956. This was a little bit of our political history. Is there any question? Sir, on what basis Fajr Nazimuddin was removed? Apparently he was charged that he was not able to start to make a draft of a constitution in the long many years. But there were some other reasons. In 1953, Fajr Nazimuddin decided to reduce the defense budget by one third. And all of the sudden we see that in Punjab and in especially in Lahore, there were riots against the uh, Ahmadi sects, Ahmadi known as Tadiani, Mirzai or Lahori. There was a strong resistance against them that the government must declare them non-Muslims. And there was a sort of shortage of food during this period. So these things made him unpopular and Ghulam Muhammad inciting that I am removing this man not due to that he failed to handle the situation but due to that he was not able to implement the constitution. So, this exam was not put on it that why I have a bad situation or a food shortage. But it was put on it that the exam was put on the constitution. Then, when the second assembly was finished, it was a controversial matter that in the government of India Act 1935, the constituent assembly has not been given to the constituent assembly. So, the matter is not done. And the government of India has ordered us تھا مول آف فروس کا اس میں دو باتیں بڑی ہے مانی خیز ایک تو یہ کہ اس میں ایس سچ کوئی ریموول کا ذکر نہیں چارجز لگائے گئے ہیں دو تین پیراگرافز میں لیکن اس میں یہ نہیں کہا گیا کہ this assembly is here by terminating or here by dissolving تحلیل یا ختم کرنے کی کوئی بات clear cut نہیں اور دوسری بات یہ ہے کہ اس میں ایسا کوئی ذکر بھی نہیں ہے کہ under which article of the government of India act governor general is using his powers تو اس کی طرف بے اشارہ نہیں ہے کہ کس article تحت یہ قدم 
اٹھایا جا رہا ہے اور نہ اس میں کوئی ایسی سچ بات ہے کہ اس کو ختم کیا جا رہا ہے کلیئر کٹ معنی میں نہیں